Hello, Wealthy Wives and Friends. This is Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying Rich Man. How are you doing today, my Wealthy Wives and Friends? All right, before we get started, you know we have to do our mantra. You know, let's get you guys in the right headspace and the right energy to receive today's lesson. So go ahead, get comfortable, close your eyes, relax your shoulders. Let the muscles of your face relax and just kind of melt into the ground, so to speak. Breathe in very easy. Now I want you to take a deep breath, breathing in. Let it go. Once again, just kind of let it sit there and say with me, I am a wealthy wife. I am a wealthy wife. And I am a wealthy wife. Once again, eyes still closed, shoulders relaxed. Take another deep breath, breathing in. Let it go. Once again, everything's relaxed. Just breathe very gently. <clears throat> I said, no stress, no strain. You're a gracious woman. You manifest with elegance and ease. And as you make that statement, I am a wealthy wife, you know this is your truth. You are a wealthy and wise woman. And today I want to talk about something in reference to other women. Stop waiting for other women to validate you. Let me say this again. Stop waiting for other women to validate you. You know, this goes back to junior high school. This goes back to possibly grade school with, with girls where, you know, you want to be one of the cool kids. You want to be hang out with the cool. If you weren't a cool kid, you want to hang out with the cool kids. But maybe you weren't the one. You weren't cool enough or you didn't have the right look or you didn't have the right whatever was necessary to get into some of these cliques. And you felt left out. Okay. It happens. I guess the children, I don't know why children are so mean sometimes. Um... And then again, that does that is actually taught. Children are not normally just mean by the, for their space of being mean. It is usually listening to and hearing grown folks do stuff. <clears throat> excuse me, that <clears throat> excuse me that creates this this nonsense in children. But still, and maybe you came up and you know, and you start going into you know into college or you become a young woman, and once again, social media is a problem because it shows a lot of things on there that are not real. I have to laugh because I see people out there that are fitness models and some of them I know for a fact did have surgery because I knew them before they had the waist snatched. I knew them before they had things done to enhance their bodies. Yeah, guys, you'd be surprised some of the people I do know um, that I've met over the years. And I know some of them, like I said, they're not authentic. Once again, I have nothing against body modification. It may sound that way sometimes when I talk, but I really don't. But my thing is always this. If you're going to put yourself out there as this, this, this icon of beauty, be honest if you've had extra stuff done. Because I know this from coming up over the years. Once again, I grew up in a time period where brown skin was, we weren't the beauties. You know, we were up and we were coming into the market, mainstream market. But, you know, our body types, our skin tones, our skin tones were desired because people busy laying out in the sun trying to look like us. But, you know, we were not the it girls. I told you, California blondes were the thing, you know, with the streaks in the hair and, you know, the blue eyes and the whole nine yards, whatever. That was more the look when I was coming up. I remember growing up, you know, I said, and, and trying to find jeans because I told you I've always been curvy. 36D, 25-inch waist, 36, 35, 36-inch hips. I was tiny and curvy. I had a hell of a time trying to find clothes that fit me. And I had thighs, not huge thighs, like I said, because I was tiny. But I had larger than, you know, average thighs because I was a dancer. 
And so I was trying to find jeans when they were only bringing out Sassoon, Gloria Vanderbilt. I forget some of the other brands that were out back then. But I mean, they were designed for skinny white girls. Let's be clear, they were. So imagine, you know, so you guys are trying to find validation, trying to, you know, look like other people to be considered beautiful. Understand, I come during a time period when uh, it was challenging, you know, to be able to go out there and find things that actually fit my body type. But it never stopped me from enjoying being who I was. Guys, I'm very sincere and I say it. I've always enjoyed being me, even as a kid. I had great friends. I was popular. Most definitely I was popular. But I didn't do it because I wanted to be. People just like hanging out with me because I was just always me. But I watch you guys, like I said, so when I'm talking to Standard of Beauty, and remember, I used to model professionally. I did that for a long time because I was not a high fashion model. I was more of a commercial model, meaning I'm the person you would see, you know, throughout runway shows. I did print work. I was in catalogs. Um, but I had to laugh, but I, I, I've, I've auditioned for commercials, but the, they always told me my look was too exotic. There was, how I move, how I speak is sensuous. I, I can't help it. It's who I am. You know, I don't do anything over the top to make myself extra sexy. I don't do anything. It's just, it's just who I am. So I guess the sensuality comes out when I speak in front of a camera. And when you're trying to sell something to suburban moms, you really don't want the chick selling it to you to be sexy. So, okay, I get that. Not a problem. <laughs> but that was funny. I was like, okay, not a problem. But like I said, but I did, I did print work, you know, so you see me in catalogs. I mean, some national catalogs at that. Um... Like I said, and you know, once, but once again, I was a model, a professional model. So, you know, when you have people that are looking at you and critiquing you, rather than that you're going to be appropriate for their particular campaign, you know, it's, I mean, they're literally taking you apart and you cannot, and you cannot take it personal. You know, so for me, I believe it's something that was very, that was just in, it just, reiterating and reminding me, you know, that, you know, every, in the eye of everybody, they have their own standard of beauty. And I may not always fall under the guidelines of, of somebody's standard of beauty. That's perfectly fine. I love being me. Hey, I rock, I rock out the house being me. So why do I want to try to fake somebody else's look? I mentioned this on a prior video. But in the world of modeling, they will even tell you, professional models will tell you, uh, high fashion models, have been, I've seen interviews where they've mentioned it. You know, they'll see a cover, they're, oh, aren't you happy you got the cover? They're like, yeah, I got the cover, but that's not my body. That's my face. That's my head. Might be her arms, but it might be somebody else's torso. It might be somebody else's legs. I mean, they would do composites. That's why the industry is getting in trouble right now because they were making composites out of people. They were like, there might be four different models in that one particular picture that they've taken body parts from. Or they may have taken a model and they Photoshop her. So while you guys are chasing after these, these, these ideas, what you think are beautiful, not realizing that even a woman on the cover of the magazine, probably it's not probably her. Now they're getting a little better and doing a little more of making it a tad more realistic, but they still Photoshop the stuff. They change eye color, hair color, hairstyles. They change all kinds of stuff. So you guys, and, and as I'm saying, so when I'm seeing people that are representing themselves as something on Instagram, when, like I said, when I've known their history, some of their history, knowing that mm, that's not how they looked originally, it's to me kind of sad because you've got people that are looking at you and especially young women, young, younger women, young women, older women, women of, you know, whatever age that are looking at these things because they're not feeling good about their bodies and they're trying to aspire to something that is fake to begin with. But they think they have to look that certain way in order to be accepted by other women. Because I'll say it again, men don't look at us the same way that women do. Men do not have the same standard of beauty for women that women have for women. Men don't. They do not. They do not. If you find a man that likes a particular type, it might be one that she's a fetish for him, meaning... Maybe that was a girl that he could never get in high school. Maybe he was the nerdy kid that, you know, the, high, the, the beauty queen, the prom, the prom queen never looked, gave a second look to. But now that he's got money, he can now date the prom queen or her equivalent. So she, that's a fetish. That is a fetish for a man. Sometimes, like I said, you know, for a while, their brown skin women have been a fetish for men. Probably still are to some extent. But... Then again, they may have a certain type they look like, but she just may be a darker version of the lighter counterpart. That's a fetish. But when a man is not 
running against his own insecurities or running out and playing and trying to play his own personal fantasies and he finally gets with a woman that he truly feels is beautiful, she would probably look nothing like what I told you. Men have fallen in love with women that look nothing like people, like the woman they thought was a man's type. Because what happened was she was his fit. This woman he fell in love with, she's always been his fantasy, but he may have been afraid to admit it because she may not look like the status quo. Or he just finally one day he meets this woman who just doesn't act like everybody else. She's different. She has a personality. She has this talent. She has this gift. There's just something about her. Oh my God. I just have to be with her. And she looks nothing like the type. This happens all the time, ladies. But you know why she was such a draw for him? Because she was confident. She wasn't running around trying to say, oh, you know, if I lost like 20 pounds, I'd be prettier. Or, you know, if my hair was straight, I'd be prettier. If my hair was curly, I'd be prettier. If my eyes were this color, I'd be prettier. If I had this bra size, I'd be prettier. She wasn't worrying about that shit. She was like, here I am. I do the best with what I've got. Like I said, she may do a few things, you know, get some facials. You know, we do the enhancement because enhancement is definitely important. It makes us feel good and it definitely adds to the canvas. Um, I don't advocate natural beauty as in no makeup at all. I don't advocate that. Some people can rock it. They look fantastic. The days I run around no makeup on. Um, but that's around the house because I told you guys, no makeup on, no eyebrows. So got to add some stuff because if not, I just look like these big brown, these big, big round eyes and these beautiful lips and that's it. Oh, high, high cheekbones. I forgot I have high cheekbones too, but it is literally a blank canvas. It's kind of funny. So I do believe in enhancement. Enhancing is good. But when a woman is not chasing the validation and approval of other, of other women and she is owning her look and she is appreciating and honoring herself, she's a man magnet just so you know. And she's a man magnet for a secure man. Like I said, not a man who's chasing after high school fantasies or college fantasies. And she could be younger, she could be older, she could be anywhere in between, it doesn't matter. But she will wind up being the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. And she will not look like what the status quo says is beautiful. But she has personality. She has confidence. Confidence is everything, just so you know. And she's not looking for other women to approve of her beauty because she doesn't care. And now that may piss off other women. Sometimes it does. But once again, she doesn't care because uh, they're not paying her bills. Uh, they're not the ones that she's laying up with in bed at night or whatever. Uh, they're not the ones who do anything in reference to her life. They just got a lot of opinions that don't hold any weight in her life. And I'm going to go back again to the courtesans, which will remind you guys, remember, the courtesan mindset master classes are going on as we speak. And I'm going to be taking enrollment up until Friday because they have their second class on Friday, on Saturday, this Saturday. But the courtesans, royal mistresses, any woman that has excelled, has had exceptional, exceptional success with men, she is the leader of the pack. She has her own look. She has her own style. Now, that her style may fall under some guidelines. Like I said, cause like I said different cliques, different uh, regions of the country do have some looks that are kind of, kind of consistent in those areas. But even if she is wearing the uniform, so to speak, there will be still something about her that, hold, that you can walk in the room and they all got the same haircut, the same whatever, the same, you know, sweater, whatever on, and pearls, let's say, for example, we'll go East Coast. But you'll know, but you, you will know who is the one that is the draw, the man magnet, because her energy is different. She exudes a different energy. There'll be something about her that looks calmer, something about her that looks more confident, something about her that just looks more solid, more real. Because she's not flittering around. She's not trying to say the right thing all the time. She's not always trying to impress somebody. She's not kissing anybody's ass, basically. Let's be clear. She's not. They're usually kissing her ass. Because she's the trendsetter in the group. I'll give you the examples again. If you guys, once again, if you guys don't believe me, once again, stop waiting for the woman to validate you. Let's go back. I mentioned on, um, this was in the class. It was actually in the, in the, uh, the, the, the class I just did with the Cortisol Mindset Master Class on this past Saturday on uh, December 1st. I talk about Four women that don't fall under the guidelines. I talked about the four the four women uh, in reference to um, the British royal family that had a major impact on the family. 
recent history of the family. I go back to Wallace Simpson. You know, she her presence in, in like I said, King George the Eighth's life phew, changed history. Did you, did you hear me? She changed history. His love for her, his devotion to her, his un- inability to live without her by his side. And he said that as he was abdicating his throne, as in giving up his kingship, giving up his kingdom. He says, if I cannot rule with this woman, I'm paraphrasing, if I cannot rule with the woman that I love, <coughs> excuse me, by my side, oh, excuse me, by my side, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. Take it. <laughs> Goodbye. And he left. He went into, He was exiled. This man gave up his kingdom. He gave up everything that he'd been trained to do. He gave it all away. All the women that were chasing after him, all of the mistresses, he gave everything away. The incredible wealth. He was still wealthy in, in, in exile, obviously, but still not the level he would have been as king of England. He gave everything up for Wallace Simpson. Look at her picture. She's not a beautiful woman. There is nothing remotely beautiful about Wallace Simpson, especially as she got older. She is an awkward looking woman. Awkward. Seriously. Look at her pictures. She, there's nothing graceful about her. There's nothing elegant about her. style is very elegant because she figured out just like Coco Chanel did. Because Coco Chanel was not an incredibly attractive woman. You know, she had very, they had very strong features, very distinct look. Very distinct. Camilla Parker, King Charles's. I mean, King Charles, Prince Charles. Hmm. Am I I forecasting here? Maybe. Uh, Prince Charles, his wife, Camilla. You know, she was essentially a courtesan to him, his mistress, so to speak. You know, while he was married to Princess Diana, he had one of the most beautiful sought after women in the world as his wife. And he is sneaking around behind her back with Camilla. And Camilla had longevity because she was with him before. You know, she he met and married Diana, obviously. But look at Camilla. I'm just giving you guys examples of telling you that you don't have to be this structured standard status quo beauty. Look at Camilla. Hello, guys. Another one. Nothing pretty about her. She's not. She is not a. Tra- she's just this typical looking country aristocratic looking woman, British woman. She is. She's nothing sensational about her. <laughs> but look at who how she's rolling these days. I'm sorry. Have you seen the railway from the carriage as she is all tiara out with the, you know, house jewels that she's wearing? People talked about her like a dog. People talked about Wallace Simpson like a dog, okay? And while they went through some shit because of the men that they loved and who loved them, they came out on top. I'll go ahead and mention in reference to the two young ones, you know, Catherine, William's wife, and obviously Meghan Markle. Now, these are two beautiful young women. These are two beautiful younger women, absolutely. They're they're gorgeous women. They are. But they're not proper royal wives either because they come from the common folk. They they don't have royal blood, immediate royal blood in their bloodlines. They're not coming from some, some aristocracy. They're common people. They come from the masses. You know, other women that are not absolutely gorgeous, Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt had a very distinct look about her. You know, I would never call Eartha Kitt beautiful. Um, I adore her. I I absolutely, I think she's a a phenomenal. I just, I absolutely adore Eartha Kitt. I love her story. I love how she handled her life. But Eartha Kitt, like I said, she was not, she was not what had been a traditional beauty. You know, she was not a, a, what was it, Lena Horne or um, a Diane Carroll. Those were very beautiful women, if you're going to go by what beauty beauty is. You know, Eartha Kitt, like I said, she had her own distinct look. And she had just very strong features, that strong jawline, those high cheekbones. Petite little woman, you know, but she had that sex appeal, that sparkle, that magnetism about her. There is nobody else that's ever going to come along and look like Eartha Kitt. Mae West, another one that was not a great beauty. Really wasn't. She was cute. You know, she had her own distinct style. She had her own way of doing things. But Mae West had men chasing after her. Younger, older. Matter of fact, her last man that she was with, I believe he was 20. I know he's 20 some odd years younger than her. And look at pictures. You can see pictures. There's a YouTube video. Mae West and uh, the men who knew her. I think it was called The Men Who Knew Her. Um, 
And he was a bodybuilder. He's a younger guy, strong. I mean, strong, strongly built, bodybuilding. One of, he's one of her muscle men. And this man, if you look at the pictures of them, even and they were together for quite a while. Cause she, I think she passed in her 70s or 80s. So they were together for a while. And they met when she was older. She was over 50 or probably over 60 when she met him, potentially older than that. But she was probably pushing late 50s, early 60s when she met this man. And he was 20 plus years younger than her. But he looks at her like she walks on water. These are women that, like I said, by, by the status quo standard of beauty back in their time, even in modern day times, were not traditionally beautiful women. They were not standardly beautiful women. But they had lifestyles, they live lifestyles, they live lifestyles that are exceptional. And these are women that were not popular. Come on. I told you, they came after Wallace Simpson because she was determined. But I think, as I mentioned before, she wasn't going to become his wife. She really just wanted to be the royal mistress and all the perks that came with that. But you know what? When you were a little too, a little too extra and you got a man who's hungry for the kind of attention that she gave him, like I told you, if you look at him, he's a submissive. He was definitely a sub. And a lot of powerful men really are. If you go behind the scenes and take a look at it, they truly are. Just because they're so, they have to take care of so many things, they want at least some place in their life where they don't have to be in charge. So they will, they're wonderful, wonderful candidates for, for dominatrix and dominant women. If he's a submissive. Not every alpha male is a submissive, just so you know. But like I said, that these women were crucified by the press. They were crucified by other women. Hell, people still talk about uh, Camilla. I've read something somewhere. Somebody called her horse face. Okay, that's harsh. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, look at her and look who she has. She has the future king of England. Hello. So why do you guys think that you have to go by beauty standards that are set by women? I've said this in prior videos as well. The standard of beauty is not set by men. It is set by women. Women enforce that standard of beauty. It's not men. It is not men. Mm -mm. Unless we're talking about fashion houses. And, those are, and at that, they're gay men. All right? They're not even heterosexual men for the most part. They're, they are mostly gay men in the fashion industry. And most of them do like women, though. Now, there's a handful that don't. But most of the men in the fashion industry, they do like women. And they design for women. And if you've got a straight man in the fashion industry, he's definitely designing for women. One of my favorite people is Robert uh, Roberto Cavalli. Oof. That man's stuff. Wow. But I remember an interview that I read, that I read up that he did, oh gosh, years and years ago. And they asked him why he became a fashion designer. And he said something about he loves being surrounded by beautiful women. He loves being, he's a typical Italian man, right? He loves beauty and he loves beautiful women and he wanted to find a way to add to their beauty, basically. And that's how his fashion line came into play. And his clothing, if you wear his stuff, it is sensuous. The silks are like just over the top silk. You know, they, they, they lay on the body just right. They, they, they accent and accentuate the right parts of your body. I mean, it's just, oh my gosh. Just an incredible experience. So when I say stop waiting for the validation of other women, stop, because some of these chicks you've got to try to get validation from are the mean chicks. Some of them are. They are mean. Like I said, some don't do it on purpose. Some of them do. Some of them do, because they're worried about you being competition for what they want. So they'll tell you things and have you convinced that you're not good enough, you don't look right. Because they don't want more people in their pool, so to speak. So they will say things to you that are inaccurate. So I told you guys, you gotta really watch where you get your information from. I mean, I appreciate you guys follow me, but you guys know I pretty much hit, I hit, hit everything generally between the eyes. Because once again, I'm older. You know, there is a wisdom that comes with being an older woman that I absolutely appreciate because I've earned it. I have earned every stripe on my jacket, so to speak. Okay? I've earned it. Highs, the lows, in betweens, outs, whatever, the great moments, the horrible moments, everything. I have come legitimate to my brand of wisdom. And I continue to grow and flourish. So that's what I'm saying. So when I see stuff out there, I, this is my platform. Some things, guys, I'm just not going to be quiet about because it hurts you guys. 
You know, I learned this so fully when I worked in the weight loss industry for 10 years. Oh my gosh, the number that women do on themselves, the headspace, the emotional space, they come out of the level of self-hatred. You know, it took me back. I was like, oh my gosh, because I'd have these clients that just hated themselves. And I knew it didn't matter how much weight they lost. I don't care how, much, how many pounds they took off. They were still not going to be happy with what they saw in the mirror because they still saw the fat girl who was picked on in grade school. They still saw the chubby girl who nobody wanted to date in high school and college. They saw the chubby girl that women picked on and made to feel less than. They saw the chubby girl or teenager or young woman that whose mother treated her like shit or father ignored her. I mean, just all these, these things that are playing out in a woman's head. And then you want to put yourself out here in situations where you're going to be going for something more. You want to date affluent men and your self-confidence is shaky at best. And then you go out there and you see the women that are thriving, that you would think are thriving. Some of them are, some of them are not. Um, not to the scale that they would have you believe. They may be doing well in their small pond, but they're not doing much in the, on, in the larger pond. Once again, no shade being thrown. I'm just simply saying there are different levels of affluent dating, as in everything in life. But you will go on there and they're saying things. And some of these women, people, and once again, I'm, I'm being very general here. I'm not calling anybody out because I don't follow everybody. I don't listen to everybody. But I'm just saying some of the things that I see in past and some of the things I've listened to. And I hear the information. Or I see the information. Or I see, I guess I'll, I'll get onto Facebook and I'll be reading through some feeds sometimes. And I'll see the things that are being said. Because women are putting themselves out there. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Should I do this? And I'll see some of the responses come back. And I know that the person sending the response back is doing it on purpose to hurt the person. But because the person asking is still so naive and still and, and still so hopeful, because they're hoping that this person that they see as an icon in the, in the world of fluent dating, they're hoping that this person that they think is doing so well is going to offer them some kind of something, throw them some kind of encouragement to help them feel better. But instead, they get back information that, you know, no, 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 no wealthy man or fluent man is going to want you. They don't like your body type. They don't like your hair color. They don't like your, your eye color. They don't like the shape of your lips, whatever. You guys already know, you've heard enough of me rant on this and enough of my videos, how much this irritates me. And that's irritation. I say being kind about it because it's beyond irritation, just so you know. There is not a reason in the world for someone to tell you that you're never enough. I'm going to go on that rant again. There is never any reason because those of you that are seeking the approval, you already do a number, have done a number on yourself in reference to lacking self-confidence and self-esteem. You already are suffering. And feeling that you're not enough. And then you've got somebody that you that you want to admire, that you're looking at her and saying, wow, yes. And she's coming back at you sideways. When all she should say is, the men that I date would not find your particular look attractive. Just based upon what they're telling me, once again, nothing against you. It's just that they happen to prefer this particular type. That's what the men have told me that I date. That doesn't disqualify every single other female. Because that particular man finds that particular look attractive. That doesn't negate the rest of the men out there. That's just that particular man or that particular tiny group of affluent men that like that particular look. Because I say it again. You guys look at the women who historically have done well with men. Look at some of the pictures some of the prior courtesans. Some of these courtesans were not attractive. Some of them were very beautiful, surprisingly, for their time period. Some of them, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. But they had personality plus. And they were articulate. They were educated. Now, I talk, when you know me, I talk about the ones that, were, that, that lasted the long haul. I'm not talking about the ones that were flash in the pan and gone. Because some of them, you know, they were party girls. Like I said, they, they did not treat themselves well. They did not treat the men well. They burned through their money. And when the men got tired of them and all their bullshit, the men dropped them and they wound up destitute and dying in poverty. Those are not the women. They were not smart women. I'm talking about the ones who were very smart and had longevity. These women were in, had a career that lasted decades and then either parlayed off into being wealthy women in their own right or did wind up marrying into wealthy families. I'm talking about the ones who were smart, that understood who they were, that understood she did her marketing, so to speak. She knew her client base. She knew herself and was always finding ways to improve herself. Because remember, I say it again, I'm going to say this numerous times and in the future, these women could not look like each other. 
you had to find a way to set yourself apart because the men, and it's then rich men still want this today. They want an experience. They can afford anything and everything they want. Some of them will stay stuck in certain loops because they don't like, they don't, they don't want to come out of their comfort zone. Some of them are basically obsessive compulsive. So they get into a certain cycle, they get into a certain thing. They're going to stay there because it's just, it's less stressful for them. They know what they like. It works for them for now. And that's good. But one day when it stops working, they're going to drop that habit too, so to speak, and move on to something else. But, but these women knew that they had to present something new to spark this man's interest and hold his attention. Because, like I said, when you have access to everything, when you can afford everything, when you can travel everywhere, it can get boring real fast. When people are constantly kissing your ass, chasing after you, telling you how wonderful and great you are, you're perfect, you're fabulous, you walk on water, oh my God, all hail the king. You know, unless he's a true narcissist, narcissist, they're like, Ugh, I'm bored. I'm tired of you people. You're just like hanger on or you're yes people. You're brown nosing. I'm over it. And that includes some of the women that are chasing after them. Let them run across that woman that has a little bit of bite to her personality, meaning she can come back with a response, a good one that makes him stop for a second and go, whoa, wait a minute. What did she just say? You know, because some of the courtesans that I like, matter of fact, Veronica Frankel, the uh, Venetian courtesan, she was good for this. She was able to do that, that the uh, the should have to parley, you know, verbal parley with men and come back and be a bit of a challenge because she, she had studied. She was one of those rare females that actually was raised on how to read and write just like, the, like men were because it was her father, may have been her father, actually it was schooling her along with her brothers. And her mother was a courtesan, just so you know. So she was being schooled with her brother. So she was learning the stuff that the men were being taught. So when she finally was, her mother presented her, because you know, guys go back and watch The Dangerous Beauty. That story is about Veronica Franco. But so when she was finally presented to society as an up and coming courtesan, you know, one of her skill sets was the fact that she would go head to head with verbal, you know, debates with men. And she was flirtatious about it. She was funny. Uh, she came at it not like, you know, we're going to do battle. We're going to duke it out. I'm going to black your eyes and beat you up. No. Because as a woman, you don't want to do that. I told you, anytime your energy shows up as masculine energy and a man really starts feeling, feeling the masculine as opposed to the feminine, he's going to stop seeing you as a woman and look at you as a threatening male because that's the energy you're giving off. So he's going to come back at you like he would another man. That has nothing to do with the fact that you're a woman. He are giving off ma mannish energy. So she did it in a way that she stayed in her feminine. So she made it a bit of a challenge. And these men loved her. These men adored her. She went through all kinds of ups and downs. You know, at one point in time, she was, they tried to try her as a witch. She, and the plague went through, you know, Venetia and she had to leave. And when she left her home, they came and stole her shit. And she got back to Venice and, and she was, didn't have anything. She didn't have much left because people, when she was gone trying to avoid the plague, people went in her house and looted her house. You know, then after all that went down, you know, next thing you know, she's rebuilding. And she's a, she was a writer. She was an author. So she had money coming in from her books. But she's, she's rebuilding herself. Then they decided to put her on trial. You know, try, I don't know if the witch trial be, uh, came before or after the plague. But somewhere along the line, they tried to try her as a witch. I mean, they tried all kinds of things to bring her down because she was so popular. And she was a wealthy woman at, any, at given times in her career. But she came back strong every time and she came back stronger because she had men at her back her men adored her be they current lovers past lovers whatever she had the skill set and if you go online and pull up her picture pull up go online look at look go ahead punch in quarters on veronica franco one of the pictures they show of her it's not that she's not attractive if that's an actual picture of her she wasn't attractive looks like she had a unibrow Seriously, I mean, that's how the picture looks. It just may have been that she just had bushy eyebrows. I don't know. I, whatever, I don't know what the standard of beauty was back then. That may have been the standard of beauty. Because every culture has its own thing. But whatever it was, she was, again, once again, not a traditional beauty. You know, there wasn't anything, you know, smooth and elegant about her features either. She was a unique looking woman. She understood how to capitalize on what was best about herself. And understood how to shore up the things about her that she needed to work on. See, these women weren't waiting for validation from other women. They weren't waiting for the women to say, oh, you look so beautiful. You look so pretty. It's great to receive compliments. You know, I get on, on Instagram, I go on Facebook and I comment on pictures when someone looks great by all means. 
You know, it's wonderful to be in that space of confidence as a woman that you can appreciate another woman's beauty. That is wonderful. That I encourage. I absolutely encourage it. Because like I said, there's so many women out there that are hurting. I mean, honest to God, if you could see behind the facade and see the pain that she is dealing with on a daily basis, it would break your heart. But like I said, but some of you are putting yourselves out there and you're putting, you're setting yourself up to be a, you know, sacrifice to some of these women. Stop it. Stop it. You don't have to go to anybody else for your validation. You need to learn how to be self-validating. You need to understand how to find out what is beautiful about you. You define your beauty. Like I said, yes, if you want to borrow bits and pieces of ideas from somebody else who you admire, do it. If it works for you, wonderful, great. But you should still have you coming through as the main look and the main idea. And you have to have courage, guys. You have to have the courage to do this. You know, like I said, some of you are never going to be successful in the world of fluent dating. And I'm just being honest with you. You're never going to be successful because you have too many things that you, you keep putting your, shit, your life on hold. Well, I'll get started when I do this. Or I'll get started when this happens. I'll get started. No, no, no. Stop it. Stop it. You could start standing where you are right now if you want it bad enough. You will start right now. You don't have to start big. You don't have to start huge. You don't have to go out there on the first date and have a man bring you. I'm picking on the shit. Nail handbags again. Yeah, excuse me. You don't have to go on that first date and the man gives you money. You don't have to go on the first date and he brings you an expensive handbag, shoes, whatever the fuck it is you guys are deciding you want. I don't know. I've been I've been on social media lately because of me packing. I don't know what the thing is now to ask for on the first date. I'm sure there's something that's being required out there right now based upon does it prove that he's financially worthy? That doesn't prove shit. Just so you guys know, he brings you an expensive gift. That's nice. He gives you some money. Okay, that's great too. It doesn't prove anything because you still don't know him. You know, some men, I told you guys, I did this in an earlier video. You know, some guys, you say you go to a club, and I'm going to use an example again. You go to the club, and, and you get in your own VIP, and you're sitting up there in VIP, and you got a baller with you, and he's got money, and he's bringing, you know, the magazines with champagne, and, you know, you guys are going to go out, and he's going to take you to his car, and, and the valet p drives up a, well, in a Bentley, drives, br you know, brings a Bentley up, and you're all impressed, like, ooh, he drives a Bentley, he got some money. Girl, please. Please. He's probably, you know, and the dude winds up having to rent the Bentley for the weekend. You know, it saved his money up and he was just celebrating. Maybe it's his birthday or maybe he's just because he wants to go out there and get him some free pussy. I don't know. But he decides he's going to get a Bentley for the weekend. And that could be a Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever. You can, you can rent anything you want out there nowadays, especially down here in South Florida or in Vegas or whatever, any of the bigger towns. Um... So, you know, you think you got this man with money because he was showering money on you. Maybe he maybe, maybe even gave you $1,000. You know, he was feeling generous. He handed you a stack. Ooh, ooh, girl, you're going to get on and start talking to everybody. Ooh, I found me. I found me a sugar daddy. I found me a whale. I found me a whatever. The boy ain't got nothing, okay? He doesn't have shit because you don't know him. He was fronting. Now, all of a sudden, you, you guys are fussing because he's not returning your phone calls. You haven't heard anything else from him. I haven't heard nails from him probably because, you know, he can't afford to, he can't afford to, to, to ball like that. So you may not hear from him again for in a month. Or you may never hear from him again because what he's going to do is he'll go to a different place, do the whole, run the whole game again. You know, pull his money together, rent his Bentley again for another weekend in a different town or a different place. He got what he wanted. And that was whatever he was going to get for that night. Maybe for that weekend. You know, he had a nice watch. Okay, and? You can rent those too, just so you know. Everything's rentable nowadays, just so you guys know. If you know the right people and how to do the right research and get online and make some phone calls. All that glitters is not gold. No different than, like I said, some of these fitness models claiming to be fitness, fitness experts because they work so hard to obtain their bodies, knowing damn well they went to the Dominican Republic or Mexico or someplace throughout the USA and had that body created for them. Once again, not knocking the surgeries. I'm just knocking the fact that some people are not honest. And they're jeopardizing other women by not being honest. Because other women are gullible. And 
gullible because they want so much to understand that if she is in that gym working out, if she's in that gym really trying to go the legitimate route to get her body into shape, and she's hearing that this woman that she admires did this by going to the gym and drinking, so what is it, slim tea and wearing waist trainers, whatever the shit is out there nowadays. They got her all hyped up thinking that if she just does these things and follows this example of this woman, she too will have a flat stomach that will stay, keep a, keep a six pack, regardless if she gains any extra weight, an extra 10 pounds. That waistline's going to still say st super snatched. Stop waiting for other women to validate you and do your research all that glitters is not gold and all that is incredibly beautiful times didn't start that way that's why I said it's important that you understand how to love yourself you guys want to date affluent men you want to live these rich lifestyles that is part of your self-care that becomes a result of your self-care that becomes a result of you understanding how to love and appreciate yourself because you guys don't want to attract these men and have a man with money and he's abusive. Because all your goal was was to get a man with money. You didn't ask for a man of integrity. You didn't ask a man who was courteous. You didn't ask for a man who was chivalrous. You didn't ask for a man who was kind. You just want the motherfucker to give you some money. And I'm going to put it just like that. You didn't think anything about the man's character. And then you get in these relationships with these men who just dog you out. Just take from you. Just tear at your spirit and leave you even more depleted than before you met the man. Because you guys, some of that's going on out there too. Like I said, you don't always know what's going on behind the scenes in some of these pictures you're seeing. You don't know the quality or, or lack of quality of men that some of these women have. I'll say it again. There are a lot of great affluent men out there. There are. There are wonderful men out there. Absolutely. Just dynamic, fun, lovable, lively, thoughtful, kind, generous men. But just like they exist, the other side, the flip side's out there too. So stop laying yourself on the altar, so to speak, and becoming sacrificial lambs, trying to find your validation from people outside of yourself. You'll never win. You'll be on the losing end of it all the time. And you guys already know this, I want you to thrive. So one of the reasons I'm doing the Courtesan Mindset, the master class right now, we did the Rise of the Enchantress, which I had a blast with that one, absolutely. Like I said, my ladies are doing well and definitely, you know, their mindset has shifted and changed in reference to what they're doing and their whys. And some of them are actually getting results, meeting men and, you know, getting stuff paid for. It's, it's all well and good. But the Courtesan Mindset, because I really want you guys to start individualizing what it is you want to do and why. I want you guys to really start getting into what makes you special. You know, because one of the classes, classes actually, I think, I don't know if it's going to be the Saturday's class, is what's your special sauce? Meaning, what is it about you that stands out? What is it about you that really is uniquely you? What hidden talent do you have? What do you enjoy behind closed doors or off in some corner of the world that nobody knows about? That would really, really make you an interesting person to talk to. And if you don't have anything, we would need to discover something that you do have to talk about. Like I said, it's not about you falling into line based upon what other women are telling you to do in reference to affluent men. Like I said, a woman can tell you based upon her experience with affluent men, especially if they're trying to typecast you. Because I'll say it again, I date affluent men. I date rich and wealthy men. This is who I date. Because it just because I'm not showing it off on Instagram doesn't mean it doesn't exist in my life. I told you guys, I like my love life private. It works for me that way. But the men I date. And I'll admit that sometimes I, I'm definitely not what they're accustomed to dating. Sometimes I know that for a fact. And sometimes they'll tell me. You know, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know. And I've had somebody tell me, you know, I'm not normally attracted to somebody who looks like you. And I'm like, well, that's just a hideous thing to say to somebody. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I go, I know it's not what you mean, but I want to make you feel bad. And then we'll laugh about it. Because that wasn't what he meant. It was just that I caught him off guard. You know, when he may have preferred, he, his, 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 his typical beauty may have been a redhead with green eyes. I'm just saying for an example. Maybe he was always in the redheads. And all of a sudden one day I come walking by smelling like heaven. 
big ass curly hair, hips swaying in the dre- in a long flowy dress, and you know, me jeweled out, whatever, whatever kind of use is the fragrance. It's the hair and the fragrance who use the first two things they notice. Then they finally get down to the rest of the body and start noticing stuff they find attractive. <laughs> But all of a sudden, he's like, he goes, he goes, I had to stop you. He goes, I had to meet you. I, I, I had to meet you. Or they've been sitting there watching me at Starbucks for months, weeks and months sometimes. Maybe they're outside, sitting outside, you know, just watching me while I'm all into my book and not paying attention. Maybe he went inside and was watching me from inside Starbucks. I know, that sounds kind of freaky, right? Kind of stalkerish. But not, you know, not stalking me. They're just admiring. There's a, there is a difference. And he finally gets the courage to speak. Or like I said, maybe random them out and about. And they're just like, you're just, you're so beautiful. And there's just something about you. you know, I see you with other people. Or I see you sitting here reading. And you know, you just always seem to, and you just need to be enjoying yourself. And then they finally hear me talk. Or I finally had a chance to talk with me themselves. And now they're mesmerized. And some of them have been shocked. There's kind of like, some of the men I told you I've gone out with have never dated a woman of color. Ever. Wasn't even a fantasy thought of theirs for some of them. Some of them it was. Like if some of them I know for a fact a bit of fetish. Absolutely. It's becoming less and less these days because more men are actually doing it now. But remember, when I first started dating a fluent man, uh, it was unusual to see a woman of color with a man of non-color. Okay? Very, very. So much so that we would just get blatant stares in the restaurants. It was just crazy. Okay? Um, yeah. But once again, it, it is what it is. I don't, I just don't take things personal. I just don't. It's like, why waste my energy on stuff that's just going to happen because it's just going to happen. Long as no one's threatening me and being like ridiculous with me, I'm like, think what you're going to think. I don't care. Threaten me, we have a problem. But use out the handless. Somebody else will take care of it for me. Because I told you guys, I have my own personal army. I have my collective, so to speak, that watches over me. Um, and boy, do they watch over me. Phew, they're very interesting. But you've got to understand, you have to stop waiting for other people to make it okay for you to live your damn life, especially in the world of affluent dating. You don't have to explain to anybody, I told you guys, so you already know this, explain to anybody why you want to do it. Now stop expecting other women to make it okay for you to do it based upon their standard of beauty. Because of course their standard of beauty is what they look like, which once again is fine. But they don't have the right to tell anybody else who doesn't look like them that they're not good enough. Totally inaccurate. And totally disrespectful, just so you know. Age ranges. I told you, younger women telling older women that they can't date fluent men or they have to date old, old men if they're going to date. Once again, you don't have the right to say that to one of us if you're younger and you're saying that. You do not have the right to tell a woman in my age bracket that we cannot hook a younger wealthy man because I know for a fucking fact we can, okay? And we do. Got enough examples out there to prove it. Joan Collins, Tina Turner, Diana Ross. I don't know who she's dating right now, but I'm sure it's probably somebody younger because she did her thing when she married her billionaire and had her two sons. You know, so she's now off the hook. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. Um, who else can I give you older? Mae West. Um, who's out there right now? Susan Sarandon was one who tends to date younger men. She's gorgeous. I don't know much about Helen Mirren, but I'm sure if Helen Mirren was single, she's probably dating somebody younger, uh, the British actress who I just love and adore. Oh, gosh. I can give you a kind of examples of older women that are dating younger men. God knows J-Lo did for the longest. And don't tell me just because they're Hollywood women that it makes them the exception to the rule. That's not true. There are plenty of women, average women, walking around life, you know, living in the regular world that are older, that are dating younger men with money. Uh, men our age are attracted, with money are attracted to us as well, as well as the older gentlemen. You know, we have a whole playing field in front of us, just like you younger ones do. So... Stop telling older women that they ain't shit. Because guess what? We are the shit. Like I said, you guys got your special sauce. We got ours. And ours comes with the years of wisdom that we have on us. Now, there's a beauty that comes from as you get older. There is a gracefulness and a graciousness that comes. Because you know what happens as we get older? We start realizing some of the things that people that when we were younger, we thought were so important. Or younger women thought were more important. Some of the things that younger women obsess over, as you get older, you start realizing that it ain't that big of a deal. 
got ulcers and hair falling out and skin breakouts and all these other crazy conditions going on over something that has no relevance in your life over the long run. There's a lot of cool shit that comes into being older. I highly recommend it. And remember, we did your time frames already. We've been there, done that. I've been in my 20s, been in my 30s, like I said, doing 40s. It's all good. But like I said, those of you that are still struggling and still out there trying to, and reaching out to other people, trying to find somebody that's going to okay you, stop it. It's okay when we support each other and we compliment each other and we're there really as a true cheerleader. I support that 100%. Like I said, but sometimes, like I said, you guys are getting smacked upside your head by women that have no intentions of helping you feel better or to encourage you because some of them, their insecurities are coming into play. So be careful where you're gathering your information and your knowledge from. Like I said, I want you to thrive. So once again, if you would really want to really delve into and discover what it is going to be your secret sauce, check out the Cortisone Mindset Masterclass series. Remember, guys, this is a six-week class. I teach, it's an hour and a half at X, uh, every Saturday, now until sometime in the January. I don't know the exact date when it ends. But it runs six weeks. It started on the 1st of uh, December, you know, to run through the middle of January, basically. I teach the class. I teach an hour-long class first, and then we have 30 minutes of Q&A where you guys can talk to me. You have me live. Live. You have my interaction with me. Utilize it. I have to laugh. People get so quiet. I'm like, I realize sometimes I'm dumping information out there, and it's kind of like, whoa, you got to think about, let it sink in. But man, if you guys have got me on the phone line, you got questions, that's the time to ask. Because I told you beforehand, the only people who have that kind of access to me, for real, for real, are my private tutoring clients. Because those calls, it's just them and me. And they have me, it's me, only me with them for an hour and a half to two hours. In addition to other stuff that we're doing in, in the private tutoring. So with this class, I added some live time with me because I wanted to give you guys a chance to speak to me. Because I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm ever going to do lives. I, I think they're so distracting. I may one day, I may give it a try, I don't know yet. I'm thinking about it. We'll see what happens in 2019. But I think it's a major distraction. Because I like to get the information to you, let you guys digest it, and then come back with comments and questions through emails, DMs, or whatever, as needed. Once again, I'm old school. What can I say? But I teach the class. And then you have homework assignments. There's additional audios that you'll listen to even after the live training. Because you get a copy of the replay. I send you the replay of the class. You get additional training and additional audio for the homework. You have workbooks and worksheets that you're going to do. We are putting this into practice. It's not theory. You guys are going to be given actual work steps, actual action steps, actual things you're going to do that you're going to be putting your hands to pencil and paper so the information is actually sinking into your brain. Yes, I take you back to school. It works. It works. Like I said, that way if you have questions, you're unsure about something, once again, you've got me live to ask the questions. Or you can email me and I respond. Six weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link. Go take a look at it. There's a video on the web page that explains what the class is all about. You'll see the course outline. The, you know, what the, the tuition for the class is available there. And, you know, take a look at it. Like I said, I've got a few more openings. I would love to have I, the women that I have that have joined. I am thrilled to have you, ladies, because I know you guys listen to the YouTube videos. I am thrilled to have you. I am looking forward to getting to know each of you better because we will talk. I have a chance to actually have comments and questions with you live. But like I said, when you guys walk out of this class, you're going to have a better idea of how to actually express yourself with affluent men. And not, like I said, as a carbon copy of somebody else, but as you, as yourself. And you'll understand what makes you so special and what will actually be a draw for an affluent man. Like I said, there's only one of you. One. Everybody else is taking. Taken. So why not become the best possible you? And live the life of your choosing. Okay. Off my soapbox. Anyway, guys, like I said, you know I adore you. I love you guys so much. I do. I don't have to know you personally. Some of you I do know. I guess I have a chance to talk to. Some of you are actually current clients of mine that listen to the uh, videos. So I do know some of you personally. 
But for those of you who haven't had, had not had the opportunity to meet just yet, understand that I do appreciate you. I do honor you. And I want you to live an extraordinary life. So until we talk again, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.